All right, guys, uh, this is Wayne again with a quick video. Uh, I'm going to try to troubleshoot, uh, you know, like what to look for um, when you're trying to figure out whether or not you should um, uh, replace your solenoid or even how to unclog these little things. Um, so kind of bear with me. I'm going to try to do it with my camera here. This is a real quick kind of a video. So uh, stay tuned. All right. Okay, so I went ahead and just removed the screws already. Um, I'm using one hand to kind of maneuver uh, my way here. So uh, just kind of bear with me here. So I removed the screws already. So this way you can kind of get access to um, to see what's underneath here, okay? All right, and uh, you know, just pop this, pop this piece off, all right? You don't have to worry about the sides right now, okay? And okay, we're gonna get this piece off here and see did I take all the screws out of this yeah there might be one just still hanging around give me one second I thought I had it all out yeah, I probably did maybe I'm let's try it again there we go all right so this is the back portion now you're gonna have to remove uh screws from here and here remove these screws over here and remove this and this here all right. All right. So now the next step is going to be just getting these things out of here. Uh, make sure you hold on to that. Your little gasket for this section. All right. And um, now you can start if you I would recommend taking pictures of your tubing, the way your tubing is set up. Uh, this one here should lead down to the auto receiver right here okay uh so you can probably remove it from here or you can try to lift this up and remove it from here i actually prefer to just remove it from here okay all right and uh um if you also want to get the rest of this stuff out of your way just disconnect these tubings also so this this guy can just be on the side while you're um, moving things around all right so now let's take a look at what we're looking at all right, so uh, if, you, if you're having an issue spraying, the first thing you really wanna do is check your hose. See if the hose can spray. If the hose can spray water, all right, then if, if you look at what's happening here, let me kind of walk you through this here and, and, I'll, and I'll backtrack and I'll repeat what I was saying, but uh, the pump is pulling water, okay, um, from the auto receiver, all right, and then, the water is being funneled through here, okay? It kind of goes through the heater coil, right? Okay, and then it comes out here. And then it splits, okay? That's why I say if the pump is, uh, if the, if the, the, um, the pump is working, the, the, um, the, the, the hose should spray. Unless, of course, this is clogged up and you just have to clean this out. You have to, you know, remove the screws. Let me just kind of pop this up so you can see what I'm talking about. If this is clogged, okay, you remove the screws from here and you can try your best to clean that out because that, 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 that is a thing, all right? Um, the other thing <clears throat> is um, remove your jets. That's probably the first thing you should do. Before you start opening the machines, just remove these jets. And I would even go ahead, guys, and um, use a small, a very small drill bit and kind of open that opening just a little bit wider if you're having a lot of problems with cloggers with this jet. Because it's very, it's very small, and the idea is to allow the water to kind of jet out by, by um, kind of restricting the air uh not the air but the passage for the water so the force will just make it kind of spray you know um so for some people they they wouldn't want to open in you know open that hole but if you're being plagued with cloggage then it's probably best to do that give that a shot all right so that's that and uh you know neither of those pliers can squeeze this and you can remove this clamp out the way and then then, then you pull your your um your tubing out, and if you can't just yank it, just use a flathead screwdriver and pry this out. All right. So now, next step. <clears throat> now, if you if you actually want to test to see if um 
the pump is working beyond what I just told you, which is the easiest way, check, check the hose. What you can do is, put this back, is um, separate this, okay? Separate this from the solenoid, okay? And what's gonna happen is you, you'll put everything back together again, all right? It's, it's, a, it's a pain in the butt, but it's, it's, you know, it's something you can try. All right, and you see these uh these these little ports, they're little holes at the bottom of this thing. So, and just in case you have any spillage, it'll just spill out on the floor. So you can check to see if water is flowing out. Okay, that means the pump is pulling it, and the water is flowing out, and it's supposed to go this way, and it's supposed to also go that way, and this is supposed to give it the cylinder is supposed to give it a boost to kind of shoot it up. So it can do the little spray in action over here. So if you just want to see if the water's flowing out, you can disconnect this tubing, put everything back together again, turn the pump on. It's a pain in the butt, but you know, it's a way to get an answer. And then if water starts to spill out, then you know, okay, well, the water's at least coming out of this. That means my pump is actually pumping and the the tank is the, the tank. The heater is a have a clear passageway to um to this. Let's open up this heater and see what you might find if a heater is clogged, right? Give me okay. one second. So here we go. See, now this is an idea of what's happening uh, in a heater. So that's what, that's the reason why I mentioned if you want to just drill a hole in that, um, in the front of the, this here, because this is what clogs up inside this heater, okay? All right. I'm not the biggest fan of this heater. I like the function of the heater, but this is the only drawback that I have with this particular heater is because uh, after you turn your uh, your machine off and you have solution and water kind of constantly flowing through this thing, uh, it's still hot. So it'll kind of stay in there and kind of get gummy and baked, you know, over time. And then this stuff now starts to shoot through your system and it's, it clogs everything up. Okay, so this is the culprit here. If your machine and your pump gets clogged up, even though your pump is receiving electricity, it can be jammed up and gummed up with this stuff. Uh, the solenoid can get jammed up and gunked up with that stuff, and the tips can get gunked up. I've even seen the tubing for the uh, hose jam-packed with uh, very hard, very brittle kind of soap. Uh, I guess you call it soap scum, right? Or soapy, whatever. All right, so that's kind of what <laughs> what you would you would see here. All right, so uh, so the pump may be working, let's say, but then uh, the water can't find its way through the corridor of this. Let's kind of see. Maybe I can show you how thick this thing is. You know, look at that. So that whole that's blocking everywhere. See that? All right, all right. So hopefully that can help you. All right, guys. So here's a rule of thumb: if you if you're replacing this. Um, if you're servicing or replacing this, just go ahead and replace the solenoid. Don't even, don't even let it be a thing. Okay, guys. So a quick recap. Um, so your troubles, you're, you're doing it. You're troubleshooting. You want to see what uh, was causing the the pump to not spray for the tips to not spray. And um, as you go through this, you find that. Um, you know, like I said, if you're going to replace your uh, heater, and even if you service the heater, like I said, uh, I would go ahead and replace these, especially if they're blue. Um, to, this is a sign of the older designs. The newer designs are black and white, okay? And um, really, to replace these, you know, you just take off the two ends here. You can use a, a flathead or you can... Um, Use a needle nose and kind of squeeze this section here and kind of pull it out. Or if you can't do that, you can just use a little flat head while you try to pull it out and kind of pry it out, okay? And just as you take this one off, just connect it to the next, to the new one and put this back. Uh, but that little test that I told you to do is really just to see if water is flowing. And then what you can do now is uh, if you're a little, if you're still not convinced, um, put on your uh, solenoid, even if you don't change it, and and then and don't connect this one, and see if water pumps out the solenoid. See what I'm saying? Uh, and you can do that all the way over into your jets. 
to verify that where, you know, what's going on, you know, where is, but most likely it's going to happen either because you need a new pump or uh, this was clogged uh, or you need a new uh, solenoid. So hopefully that was able to help you guys. If you have any further questions, uh, please, you know, just leave a comment. Uh, like I said, this video is a response to a comment because uh, explaining it uh, through uh, text and writing would have been too uh, cumbersome. So, uh, and sorry for the video quality and all the ups and downs and, and everything else. I just want to throw this out as fast as possible to answer that question. Okay. All right. Until next time, guys, uh, subscribe, uh, share, like, all right, and visit our uh, stores. We, we, we do sell t-shirts to help support what we're doing here. So, you know, buy yourself a t-shirt. Uh, and especially, hey, if you want to design, I can even do that and have some fun, maybe trying to put a design together and put it out there for sale on a t-shirt. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.